Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to dive into the world of food styling. Now food styling is absolutely huge. A lot of professional photographers use food stylists to create those beautiful food photos that you see. The stylist is a career. They work for photographers, video, the film industry. It is a career unto its own and it is massive and it is technical. So we're not going to be able to cover the entire realm of food styling because I personally am not a food stylist, but I'm going to give you my tips, tricks, and all the ins and outs that I can tell you to help up your food photography game. So if that's what you're into, stick around. Now, as I said, the world of food styling is absolutely huge. So in order to cover as much as I possibly can and give all the knowledge that I know on the topic, I need to break this video into two pieces because otherwise it would be a very long video and I'm not sure how many of you would want to stick around for that length of a video. So we're going to break it down into two parts. The first part is we're going to look at the equipment and the tools we use to do food styling to make our job easier. The second video that I'll create is food to style food with. So make sure you stick around to check that one out when I release it. But this first one is all about the equipment that we're going to use to style our food and to make our life easier. Now, one of the first tools we're gonna to look at, handy dandy little tweezers. Get a variety of sizes. These ones actually are a medical ones, but they have very fine points. So it's absolutely ideal for picking up little things and moving them around. Now you can see in this video where I'm using these tweezers to move the noodles around, the meat, carrots, whatever I need to because it's small and it's easy to move around. So have a nice pair of little tweezers and get an assortment of sizes. Now along with tweezers, we've got the next step up, tongs. Now these are a small size tong and you can get large ones and I would suggest you get a variety of them because again you can pick stuff up and move it around so you're not leaving fingerprints on stuff, you're not crushing things, you're not getting a mess on your hands and it's easier to place things. So you can see placing a little blueberry becomes very easy when I'm using a pair of tongs. So very handy to have are your tweezers and tongs within the studio and a variety of sizes for both. Replaces your fingers and saves you the mess of sticky fingers. Now we're going to look at the sharp world of, you guessed it, knives. And you need a variety of knives in your studio because you need to cut bread, you need to cut meat, you need to dice, slice, and do the same as a chef because what? A food stylist is basically prepping the food for you to photograph. So for yourself, when you're doing your own styling, you need all the weaponry that goes with it so that you can do the job properly. So having a full set of knives is very handy to have within your studio. All right, let's set that aside. Look at the next thing that we need. Now, one of the handiest things, and I use it for more than just food styling, works great product photography and a lot of other things too, are makeup wedges. I don't know how well you can see that, but these are just simply little wedges that uh, ladies use to put on their uh, makeup. You can get these in the dollar store, you can get them everywhere. They are super cheap and super handy. You can put them under something to help stop that item from rolling. Check this out. It's stopping this large veg rolling to the side. So you can see how handy these are. I place it under the vegetable and it stops that large fake vegetable rolling around the table and holds it at the angle that I want and keeps it in place. Now another little way of using the uh, little makeup sponge, look at our little bread set up here. That top bread is sitting a little too flat. I want to show a little more of the top side off. Boom, look at that. How about we uh, do it with some bagels now? Look at how I can tilt that top bagel so you can see more of the top much better display, especially if that's in the background of your scene. You get a little more visual of the bagel, the bun, whatever you've got going on. So you can tip food. You can keep food from rolling. Very handy to have. Now, let's look at building a sandwich. When you're building a sandwich, you don't want to waste a lot of groceries, shall we say, and try and fill the whole sandwich like you properly would. We're going to do a bit of faking here. We're only going to do the front part of the sandwich and we're going to put the makeup wedges and stuff in the back. That creates the spacing and the gap, gives the food some height and allows us to arrange the front up nice without having to worry about the back. So we can use the makeup wedges 
in multiple, multiple places, and they're handy to have, and they're soft and squishy, works in your favor. Now, the next little handy thing to have in the studio, toothpicks. Really, really handy to have. They can be used for multiple things. One of the main things that I use them for is like holding the tomato in place. When I'm building this sandwich, I can use a toothpick, slide them in, they're hidden out of the way, and I get the food exactly where I want without it sliding off. You can also use your toothpick, almost like pickup sticks, to move little things within your set and your dish without getting your fingers sticky again. Now, another little trick to these, if you don't have any makeup wedges or whatever, and you want to stop something from rolling like a bottle, check this out. Lay a couple of toothpicks down, put the bottle on it. It's not going to go anywhere. So you can see how putting a couple of toothpicks down will help stabilize the item that you want. And if it's a product of food and it's in the container, you can stop the container from rolling around and you can get the angle with the label up perfectly the way you want it. So toothpicks are very handy to have in the studio. Now, along with it is kind of like its cousin, shall we say, and this is the, uh, oh, I haven't even opened these ones. Let's open them now. Yes, we won't, because the lid just broke off. These are skewers. They come in a variety of sizes. These are big, long ones, almost like a for a kebab type thing. These are smaller, thicker ones, but they're ideal for sticking in to hold your food and stuff in place. You can simply break this to whatever length you want. It's bigger and thicker, so it's a little more heavy duty. So again, having a wide variety of toothpicks and skewers within your studio, and one that opens up easier than this one obviously did, but having them available is handy for a multitude of reasons yet again. All right, let's just clear some of this out of the way for a second, because we're starting to get a bit too much of a pile in front of us. Now, the next thing we're going to talk at and look at is this little item here. You want a bunch of them, all different sizes, from the little eyedropper bottles to little bottles like this. This one uh, came with a hair dye kit. No, not for me, for my daughter. But she never uses these bottles, and they work perfectly for me because I can put oil in it, I can put water in it, water glycerin, whatever I want within the bottle, and I can drip and get a more accurate little drip. Now, look at on that strawberry, how I can add a little bit of just plain water to give a little more sparkle, a little freshness, a little zest, a little pick-me-up to that strawberry. Now, you can go up. Here is a uh, bottle of chocolate Giardelli sauce in a squeezy bottle. Again, it's the same principle, but let's just stop for a moment and appreciate this. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. That looks so good. Chocolate pouring down that strawberry. So a wide variety of little bottles is your best friend for placing liquids exactly where you want it without making the mess. Now, again, with the bottles, and I've shown this in the past quite a few times, a variety of spray bottles, different sizes, will become your friend. This one here always has a permanent solution of water and glycerin that I can use to add that fake condensation to the drink glass, to the side of a can, whatever I want. I can have one with just water in having a little mist. So you can see here I'm spraying on the bottle of the uh, drink just some plain water just to add a bit of beading. It was a quick shoot so I didn't have to worry about adding glycerin for the staying power of the water droplet. The water worked just fine. But check out when I add this with some water and glycerin sprayed onto the side of a glass and I get that cool condensation wet look looks fantastic. Not only can you spray it on that stuff, you can spray it directly onto food as well to create that freshness, to create those little highlights, to create the impact that you're looking for. All right, another handy dandy piece of equipment to have in the studio, which you might not have thought of so much, is fake ice. Now I have a ton of different fake ice from glass ones. These are acrylic. There's different levels of quality of ice. These ones are a lower quality, so I tried to keep them back or in a glass where you only get a hint of the ice cubes, but you can get ice cubes that float because real ice cubes float, a lot of fake do not. So if you're in the market and you want ice that looks real, you want to get some that floats and some that sink. Now you can see in these couple of pictures here, fake ice comes in different sizes from an ice cube to crushed ice. Now, what ends if we use ice simply as a prop to style with our drink or our food. That works equally as well. 
Now, here's a little thing you probably never even thought of. You're in a pinch. You're trying to do this bowl of soup shot, and there's so much liquid and not enough meat and noodle or whatever in the bowl, and you want to increase it, take some of your fake ice cubes, slide them into the bowl. As you're sliding them in, the food will start lifting up on top of the ice cube. If not, you can give it a little helping hand. You can see now the noodles and the meat and the veg starting to become visible as the ice cubes go in. Simply drain off a little of the excess liquid from that. Look at that. I added a couple more little noodles. It's another little use for your fake ice that you may not be aware of that comes in very handy, especially in a pinch if you happen to be on location and you don't have any other way of adding anything into the bottom. Your fake ice will work, like I say, in a pinch. Now another very handy thing to have within your little kit is scissors. Again, everything tool-wise within the world of food styling you want to get in various sizes. These are basically standard size. These are pretty much my go-to for a lot of things. But you can see, take in some spinach. It's got that extra long tail that I don't want. Trim a little bit off, you're good to go. You got a little bit of a bad spot on a leaf or you want to shape a leaf or you want to shape an item. You just simply take your scissors and do a bit of trimming. So this is great. You can cut raw meat with these. You can do a wide variety of jobs with scissors. And as I say, get little nail ones and get some bigger ones you'll find it very handy. Now, for all you bakers and things in the creamy, frosty world, what do we need? We need some spatulas. You need, again, and it's the same with everything, you need a variety of sizes to make the job easy. Check out that cake frosting. Mmm, doesn't that look good? And that was simply laid on and then used a spatula to create it. These are very handy to have within not only the kitchen, but your food styling for all those little touch-ups and to create that smooth or that little ripply look that you want within your frostings or creams. All right, our next little thing we're gonna get into here is little basting brushes. This is a silicone one. You can see here how I paint exactly where I want to add that liquid to the strawberry to create those highlights and the freshness just in the area that I want. You can use this to paint onto meat, meatballs, steaks, whatever. You can put a little bit of olive oil on there and give it a little brush and it'll make it look sweet and fresh because you get all those little highlights when you add liquid onto your fresh fruits. So this, in essence, works as a little paintbrush for food. Now speaking of paintbrush, that is another thing you should have within your studio and that is a wide variety of paintbrushes. I've got them in the bigger sizes, right? And I've got them all the way down to the little sizes and I can get a ton in the bag here and I use them a lot. You can fake painting the grill marks on meat. Use a paintbrush. So when these become too big for what you're after, you can do intricate little details with the little paintbrushes. And you can, again, you can pick these up at the dollar store. Now let's start talking about the world of cleanup and other things. Q-tips. I got a little box full of Q-tips. These are handy, as you can see, cleaning the rim, cleaning in those little spots on the dish. Because if you send your work out to a retoucher, they're going to love you because you're taking the time and paying attention to the details to make sure that your image is cleaned up and you're getting the best you possibly can in camera. Another thing that we use for cleanup, paper towel. Ah, I go through so much paper towel doing food photography. You're going to use it to wipe the edge of a plate, wipe the edge of a bowl, clean up your dish, your table. If you happen to have an accidental spill within the studio, which I tend to frequently, then paper towel will be a godsend. Another very handy thing you can do with paper towel is take some of the paper towel, soak it in water so it's nice and wet, and you can put your fresh herbs between it. So that way, when you're getting your set all set and ready to put the herbs on, they will be nice and fresh because they've been trapped within moisture. Now, if you've got chopped up herbs or whatever, you can just simply put them in a bowl, take some paper towel, dampen it, set it on top of the herbs within the container, and it'll help keep it all fresh. That way your garnish looks the best when you get around to it, because it might be a little while of you tweaking your set before you can actually get to the garnish. This way, you can keep your herbs nice and fresh. Another thing to have in the studio, oh, gotta reach way over here for this one, and that is grinders, food grinders. These work really handy. You can get powered ones, manual ones. You wanna get one though, that has an adjustable grind. So you can get a fine grind or you can get almost a coarse grind like this. So if you've got a really coarse salt, you can grind it down a bit to get a bit smaller. 
very handy to have within your studio for doing styling. As I say, we're talking all the equipment you need that'll help make your job easier. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is a hugely valuable tool that I use in more than just food photography and food styling. And that is my little bag of sticky tack. And it comes in different colors. Here I have a sticky ball of white. Here I've got blue. Sticky tack. It's almost like kids' little Play-Doh almost. Really handy. You can put some, look at this, on the back of your product and it stops the product from rolling around on the table so you can put the label or wherever you want it where you want it without worrying about it rolling all over the place so it helps hold your food in place now talking about holding it where you want check this out you can use it to help hold an item up within your scene as well knife is standing up perfectly well now another thing and this is related to reflections in cutlery and utensils and i put a link to a video i did down below on just that, how to deal with reflections and that nasty glare and hot spot within your cutlery. Check out that video if you have that problem, it'll really help you out. And this is one of the things that we can use. And it's simply a matter of taking some of this, sticking it on the back of our knife or spoon or whatever, and you get that bit of a tilt on the angle and we change the angle, the light hits the cutlery and boom, reflection, hot spot, gone. Now we're going to get into our last piece and there's a little bit of controversy within it and this is reach for the sky. Boom. Heat guns. When you want to melt something within the studio a lot of people love using heat guns and they work brilliantly. One thing that you need to know and be aware of and a lot of people don't is this is a dry heat. If you take this to a piece of processed cheese, it'll melt it, but you're start also going to start getting that little crispy, burning like look to it, almost like on the top of a brulee. If that's what you're after, works brilliantly. The next way we can do things is with this, and this is kind of like a little propane tank with a torch that comes out, and I can use to heat and burn and crisp. It works good on meat and a wide variety of stuff. So you've got your dryer heats. Another thing you can do is you can use a steamer. That moist heat will melt cheese and it won't burn it. But if you're trying to do butter or something like that, heat gun works fine. But a steamer creates moist heat and it won't burn and you get a better, fresher look to your cheese melts. That's something that you need to try. Well, there you go. I'm surrounded by the equipment and tools that I use to do food styling. There's a few more little bits and bobs, but this is the bulk of it. These are the things that you will find that'll make your job a thousand times easier and help you create better looking photos because your food styling becomes a little easier to do. So as I say, be aware, I'm going to put out another video and it's on food to style food with. So it's kind of a companion one to this, but I didn't want to put it in because it would definitely go way too long. That's it for this one. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you're aware when I post new videos like this. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. So, until the next time.